strong on perseverance. You know, sometimes I've got a lot. And the organized churches work with a set of beliefs, and that also affects us. There are some things going on in the arena, that's why I picked this, in the arena of social stuff. But I'm going to talk zeroed in on the Bible, Christianity, and the social setup under Judaism, and the social setup under Christianity. But you've got got to thinking about, you know, we've got all this social media and social this and social that. And we've got uh, many organized denominations that are not, absolutely not going to listen to Paul the Apostle. And it causes certain stresses. And that's what I want to work with. I want to work with that and see if we can get those things off of us so we can go ahead for the Lord and do His work in this world. Because that's what he wants, and that's what we learn from what it is that we study from Paul's books. Paul, he gave Paul the answer, the marching orders for today. But there are not many people listening to him, and it causes stresses. Now, you folks, and besides the added things we've seen here recently, we have stresses. Americans have stresses, and I hope uh, some of our friends really tune in to this lesson if they are not on it the first time around, don't ask them. Got them to get in on this because I want to try and lift some, not, not by myself, that's for sure. But, uh, and we have to work and we live by faith. Seen a lot of that, how the Lord's been working with people here, and uh, it's evident here tonight. Amen. Very evident. So let's think page 78. Amen. Again, put up the my guitar picking. <laughs> Ready? Ah, wait, wait, whoa, 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 too high. Help me, Kate. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you. 
Thank y'all. That was good. All right. Page, uh, let's see this one. 304. 304. While traveling through this world of sorrow, I'm on my way to glory land. I'll not turn back on some tomorrow. I'm proud of seeing you. I won't go no more about that mansion. I'm going to see.
good singing. Now, the glory land way. That's really true. That's really true. We did a lot of those songs when America was America and we could go to the nursing home <laughs> freely. But we did a lot of those songs and sing and it was really good. It was really fun. And as the Lord lets us sing along here, I actually believe it's leaking out. That's what I've been listening to and hearing people, hearing the doctors talk about it. It's much milder, hopefully, you know. And uh, Britain is already going way, way, way down. Uh, it started in South Africa, and then Britain got you know, in the news next with it, and then America. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm, I'm really looking forward when people can just lay aside. But we just have to, by the grace of God, move along and move through it. But there are some things that we don't need in our lives. And we don't need to be worrying about it. I mean, you folks here tonight, I guarantee you, before we get done with this, some of the worries that you have as a Christian trying to do what God's asked us to do will be gone. And the reason is, look what the Paul, uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, and let's start there uh, in verse 12. And the reason is, lots of folks, including myself, I still have lots of things that I work through. That's why I love to study. I love to study, and I love to read behind those that study. And I, I never, ever will get tired of that. The thing about denominations, strong denominational organized religion, is once they get set in a thing, that's it. And then they go through it. They got about five or six messages, and that's it. I mean, that's it. Now, the thing about, we do mention rightly dividing the word of truth a lot, but the thing about that, when you get in the word of God, you get the word of God. Now, we're still Baptists. That means a few things that, that we agree with, eternal security. We believe that. Uh, we don't baptize babies. There's a few other, other things that we practice here. Our, our congregation is congregational. If a, a matter of importance comes up, we vote on things. Those have been basic Baptist doctrines for a long time, so we're in complete agreement with that. But this lesson tonight is not Baptist doctrine. I promise you that. And it's hard sometimes. We function by beliefs and we're trying to carry them out. Right now, as we speak, organized religion is trying through politics and social gimmicks to do the work of God. Now, folks, that's not only wrong morally, it's wrong with the word of God. It's wrong. That does not mean you should keep your eyes open. Some idiot wants to, you know, be a dictator or something like that. That's different. And that's something we as Americans, we have a heritage of keeping our eyes open to stuff like that. And we do, and we will. But to try and use politics and going after a plan that God has for this earth through the Jews and through Israel is... It's not part of what it is that we're supposed to be doing. We'll, we'll get a couple things tonight. Some of the things we don't need to be worried about. And then some of the things that we just need to engage and do. By the grace of God. You see, that's the difference. By the grace of God, we'll do this or that. Paul said that. By the grace of God, I'll do this, I'll do that. And uh, you learn to talk like that because it, it takes uh, a lot of pressure and a lot of the heat off of it. Lord willing, I'll do this or do that, way Paul put it. Lord willing, I'll do this and I'll do that. But uh, there's a lot of pressure being put on Christians, especially fundamentalists. I know the fundamentalists because I was one for years, but I'm not now. And But I still have fundamentalist tendencies. I still have them. And I also have some fundamentalist beliefs that as I go continue and rightly dividing the word of truth are dropping off, dropping off like weights. And they are weights. And I'm beginning to understand that. Now, Paul, we're doing this verse right here. 
I want y'all to know that. Harrison, I want you to know that. I want you to know that we are doing what Paul and the Word of God and Jesus told him to instruct us, and we're doing it. We're doing what's in this verse. It's not something that's detached and away from us. It's something that we're very much involved in in this church. I want you to know that. Uh, we're not grading you in it. It's just something that we're doing. And as you, as you grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, it's something second nature as um, eating fried chicken. <laughs> it's second nature. And it's good. And it's pleasant. And it's the way God wants it. You know, we've got a job. Trying to win people to Christ. In between us and them is the devil. Now the devil's going to use organized religion you got to get that to keep the people from listening to what it is we're telling about the grace of God. He'll even use organized religion to do that. He'll use anything. He is a relentless, terrible adversary. And the church, which is the body of Christ, and studying the word of God and listening to verses like the ones we're going to look at tonight, he don't want you to hear it. He don't want you to hear it. He doesn't want people that once in a while tune into this to hear it. Now, some of the people tune in and they begin to see, a few of them, uh, some of the differences between us and organized religion. And I'm glad of that. I'm very glad of that. That's very, very helpful. And hopefully we encourage people to come down and be with us and learn in person. And uh, it's just handy. But we're involved in what I'm going to read. I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for this. It's true. I'm not lying, I'm not flattering, I'm not exaggerating. Watch. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. We, this church knows, these four people here know that the Holy Spirit is the one leading this church. Not me, the Holy Spirit. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely, freely, freely given to us of God. Salvation is a gift. That's been forgotten. <laughs> you can't coerce people politically <coughs> and teach that. Have you ever heard of dominionism? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, it's stronger in this country than it's ever been, and it's wrong. Baptists were the first ones that spoke up for church and state separation. Did you know that? No. I don't want the federal government coming in here telling us how to worship. And by the same token, we don't have uh, the ability to run everybody like we want them to be run. And if you stress yourself over that stuff, you look out at the world, Miss Connie, you, 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 we're inundated with a social thing that is, there's never been a generation that has to deal with as much information as we deal with. And it's, it's tearing the fabric of our own country. When I was a child, when I was a child, you could go to church and the most important thing with the people in your community, and some of you live like this, in your community, if someone was lost, they get, we, our, we were working on trying to get them saved, not be, have them become Republicans or have them become Democrats to satisfy our fleshly desires. And I'm telling you, you better turn loose of that stuff if you're trying to use that to serve God. Now, again, I'm not going to vote for any dictator, and I'm going to watch. But I don't have, I'm, I'm losing this uh, religious force, enforcement type of thing. It's not, and some of the people in this country, they say, well, some of these people want a theocracy in this country. I don't. Let me tell you, I don't want the Baptists running this country. I'll guarantee you, don't want the Presbyterians or the Catholics. Don't want any of them running it. We got a constitution, the people that started this country were wise about that stuff. We don't want religion and state mixed. Okay? And we don't want to be, as a Bible-believing people, we don't want to be fouled up with some of the things that these other organized religions are doing. 
What it's doing, Brother Charlie, is causing such a sense of failure. We look out the world, you look at the news today. This, this is not the church's fault. Organized religion is, is part of the problem, but it's not the church's fault. There's always been sin. There's always been murders. There's always been crime. There's always been all this stuff. And I'll guarantee you, the Baptists aren't going to solve it from their denominational stance. Now, if they preach Christ and someone gets saved, that's different. You better believe it. The individual into a religious nation. No, sir. Now, if a bunch of them get saved, hallelujah, glory to God, you'll have some good neighbors. Right. Just like it was when we were kids. And when the preachers was more concerned about souls getting saved than trying to enter the political realm. All right, now, the reasons behind them trying to enter in the political realm is bad doctrine, bad teaching. What we're doing here, and I'm going to read part of this again. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of oh God. That's what we're doing. We're not plotting. Which things also we speak. We preach what we believe. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. We're not a bunch of philosophers. Don't want me. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's what I'm going to do tonight. That's what we do. It's how we teach. It is how we teach. And I don't know how you're going to get it any more scriptural. <laughs> Amen. We're not trying to turn everybody into Baptist. You know, we're not Baptist Republicans. No, that's crazy. And we look out at the world and we see all this mayhem and we start trying to, and it makes us feel like, well, maybe we're not doing very good. And the youngsters who have peer pressure and problems at school, they have, they have twice or three times the pressure we have in high school. And I know that's true. You got a preacher to wear of that. So I'm trying to help by teaching you the best that we possibly can the Word of God. Which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. That's what we want. And if you stick with the Word of God and believe it over all of this other organized religion or denominationalism, you're going to be doing that. That's what we're doing. Comparing Spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man. See, this thing, this, this religion trying to control government, that's flesh. That's flesh. What we're after, Brother Danny, is get some folks born of the Spirit. No, we don't have to worry about it. That's all we're supposed to be doing. The end result would be a better community. The end result to put the church back to not feeling like such a stinking failure. We're not failing. Now that's a fact. They run around half Jew, half Christian. They don't know which way to turn. They think changing the nations of the world is the church's job. That is not the church's job. We go to the other nations, but we seek out individuals. See that? Now, Judaism, uh -huh, different. All right, let me settle down here. <laughs> let me settle down. All right. Judaism. I want to explain it first. That's this side. This side of this thing. And that setup, Jesus is the King of Kings. On the earth, and Lord of Lords. On the earth, over Israel. His role to the church in this event. But Revelation 19, y'all pray for me. This isn't easy. Revelation 19, where did I go here? I think I just wrote it over here. 1916. 1916. Okay. Thank you. All right. And he, this is talking about when Jesus returns at the second coming. He's coming down to the earth. He's going to rule and reign over Jerusalem, over the Jews, which will rule and reign over the nations of the world. Now, you've got to get that. That's what prophecy is about. 
Prophecy is not about individuals. Prophecy is about nation building. Can you get that? Amen. Don't blame me. I didn't write this Bible. But you better be alert to it. Some of the people that accused some of our former presidents of being nation builders were absolutely correct. That is not the church's business. And people that are trying to do that among organized religions are causing a stress, Brother Ronnie, an extra stress. We've got enough stress. We've got too much information from every source. You've got to be able to weed some of that stuff out. So when you hear some of these guys on TV, oh, yes, we just get everybody to be a conservative and Republican and uh, a Baptist, we'll have it all together. Or maybe they'll change it to a Catholic and put pressure on the church that's undue and unwarranted before God. That's not what we're supposed to be about. That individual over there in India wants us to get over there. He don't know he don't have any answers. And we're not going to try to rebuild India. We're Christians. We're Bible-believing, rightly dividing, grace Christians. We'll try to tell him about Galatians 2.20, which we'll read in a minute. But we're not in the business of trying to rebuild his nation. Now, if you think Judaism is not in the nation rebuilding business, you need to reread your Bible. Amen. Now, that's not the program for today now. Okay. The gospel of the kingdom there. Add on his vesture and his thigh and name written king of kings and lord of lords, and you can bet your booties that's on this earth. King of kings, nations. Lord of lords, nations. Look at Matthew I have to look at the board. 28. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Now, let's explain part of it. Now, here's where my Baptist brethren, y'all might as well take a hike because you're not going to believe this. Okay. But that's okay. I see a lot of you. Okay? But I believe the Word of God. Amen. Over the Baptist denomination. All right. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Verse 19. Now, there are a lot of people who are familiar with this. I guarantee you the fundamentals of Baptist are. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. What's that word? Is that nations or individuals? Nations. Did that occur? Did they succeed in this? Uh-uh. They didn't leave Jerusalem, some of them. Nations baptizing them. Them what? Nations. Them nations. You remember your English classes? You know what a direct object is? That's a direct object. Them of nations. That boy, my English teacher, has been proud of that little lady right there. <laughs> God bless her soul. Keep up in heaven. Clyde Clark taught out there at Akron. You're too, you were too young for her, Laura. I wish you'd have had a little of her. She was something. She was something. World War II veteran. <sighs> she was a dandy. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now watch. People that don't listen to this and don't think that's nations, they'll take this next verse and try and say, well, this says he'll be with them till the end of the... Okay. Teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Now let me answer your question. What's that talking about? Did Jesus love Israel? Is he ever going to give up on them? After the church is raptured, in that time period called the end, mm -hmm. uh, to the, in the book of Daniel, mm -hmm. all right, the end of the world, the end of the age. So Christ, Christ postponed, according to Paul, he postponed his kingdom into the future and started reaching individuals with the gospel of grace. And the Lord changed hats. He's got more than one hat, he's got many friends. But look at his hat, the head of the body. Now look at the difference. Look at the difference. You've got to see this. We're comparing spiritual things with spiritual. There had never been in the entire Bible a designation of God like that. A designation of Messiah like that. Never ever. Paul's got a brand new revelation. Head versus King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You see? National to the end of the head of the individuals that are in the church of the body of Christ. This is where a lot of our folks that listen to this don't understand this. What we believe about the church, which is the body of Christ, that whether you're a Pentecostal, 
whether you're a Baptist doesn't mean you're doctrinally sound on everything. I'm not either. Still learning. Or a Roman Catholic that is trusted in the blood of Christ. Wherever in those outfits that they teach the blood of Christ, and if you believe you get on what he did for you at the cross, the blood, that we can be saved and put in the body of Christ of which Jesus is the head and not the Pope or the Baptist Popes. The head of the body. That's what Christ is today. Right now. That's what's going on. We're down here listening to the word of God and, and rightly dividing it and comparing spiritual things with spiritual. This is great. You're coming to a church where the word of God's actually being taught. Instead of manipulating you into joining the tea party. I'm a member, but I'm not going to have I ever actually go and join the tea party. You can go down there with him. You like tacos? They have tacos. <laughs> I, I, I'm learning. I'm learning. Now, Tea Party stands for some things. Maybe it'll help us not get under a dictator. Okay. But I'm not down there. I'm a chaplain of that outfit down there. Now, I'm not down there to try to force the people that are Democrats to become Baptist fundamentalists. And I hope my friends who are members of the Tea Party understand that about me because I'm not after that. I want, to step, I want to learn. I want to be a good citizen the best I can. I don't, there's not many options. It's either that or the elks, and I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> Different. Look at head of the body. All right, look at Ephesians 1, 22, 23. And we're comparing this with Revelation 19, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All right, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. This has been a, quite a study. I've been working on this thing. It's, I think it's wet bullets. Because I know a lot of people don't believe what I'm saying. They listen on that thing. I hope you all do. They're at least considered going to study. I don't ask you to believe it just because I preach it. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? I'm not going to force you to believe it. And I put, I'm going to have to get some help with this one toward the page. Brother Ronnie, would you be <clears throat> kind enough? 22 and 23. He <clears throat> has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? That's us. The church, which is his body. That is not Israel. That is not the setup of Judaism really reaching nations. We're to reach individuals. I think this one is in the Bible. Look over at 2 Corinthians. Thank you, Brother Ron. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Here's what we're supposed to be doing. And we are, by the grace of God. We can't make them get saved, Miss Kathy. But we can love them. And we can tell them about the grace of God. We can tell them it's a gift. We can tell them it's a gift, Miss Marcia. They may not take the gift. But that's our job. Each individual that you folks are working with, and I know you are. I know you are just by the nature of what it is to be a member of the body of Christ. You're going to be talking about it. And the more you learn about right division, the more you talk about it. It's natural. It's not something, I'm asking you to go to, some of you have worked and are working at Walmart. I'm not asking you to go down there and turn into everybody into Baptist Republicans. <laughs> Nation builders. No, 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 no. Something comes up in the conversation, you hear it, you've been reading, studying something, and they latch on to it. You say, well, hey, you know, salvation is for grace. Why don't you come visit? No. They're not going to throw uh, stuff out of the candy section at you. All right. Here's what we're to be up to, to do. I'm not trying to build nations. All right. Where did I start there? Second Corinthians five. Five. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out where. Okay. Uh, well, let's get verse 16. That's a little deeper thought. But we'll get it. We'll get it. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Huh? See that? 
Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, when? In his earthly ministry. We don't know him like that anymore. He said, we know him spiritually. We've never shook hands with Christ. But the Holy Spirit introduced Christ to us, and spiritually we have. In fact, he's embraced us. Christ himself. I like that picture over there. That little picture, that's the first day in heaven. Uh, when I think about when I first got saved, it just almost brings tears. I don't know about it. But it changed my life. He gave me a big spiritual hug when he said, I came out of hell. Hell. And he saved me. And he's going to keep me out of big hell, too. <laughs> when it wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yet though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if it now, I tell you, when you get there, if you're not there, you're, you're there if you're born in the Spirit. But when you accept that, God's going to really bless you. You keep trying to drag the Old Testament back up here to grace. What you're doing is shooting yourself in the foot. Nation building Israel is not individual seeking church, body of Christ. Let it go. When you look, the church is not a figure. Listen, listen. The church is growing every day. We support missionaries to, to these nations to seek out individuals. The church, which is the body of Christ, is growing every day. Is the world still lying and sin and getting worse? Yes! But we're doing what God said to do. We get to reap the benefits, not only in this life, but that can encourage you. Don't let the TV and all of these religionists make you feel like you're a failure. You are not. You are the church, which is the body of Christ, the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ. And there are people getting saved around this world and in this country and in this state and have been in this church and in this county and in this city. So we are not a failure and neither are you. You listen to the TV too much and you listen to all this stuff and I'm not saying it's not happening. I believe it is. I believe it is. Riots and killing and massacres and all this stuff. But you know what? What would happen in this nation if the pastors started loving souls again and caring about Brother Danny getting saved? I mean, he is, but you see the point? What they did. Like when we was young and those pastors. Now, Florian, we'll need an amen on this. You used to live in a community that's like the very one that I'm talking about, where the pastors were concerned about people getting saved. Right. And they weren't worried about politics all the time and they were happy and they were good neighbors and they were most of them good Christians well I remember my grandmother's generation Cawthor in Arkansas loved each other and I said Lord help me be like that cared about each other go to church they walked to church on Sunday morning my grandmother would walk to church with her sister and I, you could hear the people singing hymns going to church on a path on a dirt path. Saying, amazing grace, how sweet to sound. Going to the church house. Methodists on that side, Baptists on that side. And they loved each other. Once in a while, they had, if they had meetings at the Methodists, if they had revivals, they had to take off, go to help the Methodists. You know, they just kind of put up with them. <laughs> and it's vice versa. Methodists putting up the Baptists, and they support each other's revival. They loved each other. What's the difference? They were interested in what we need to be interested in. Individuals, not nation building. We are not Judaism. I, 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 I'll get this in a little bit. Um, 2 Corinthians 6, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Notice that any man. Harrison, don't miss that. Is that singular in the English language? Any Man. Is that just one man? Sure, it's one man. Yeah. It, any one man. Well, any man, I see what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, there's many men. But any man can come out of a group. But any man. 
any man. I'm talking about Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer, you, you know the only problem that poor man got? He just needs to be saved. Amen. I don't care about his politics. And I know they're destructive. I'm supposed to pray for Chuck Schumer. Ooh, have we been hating some people with a vehement hatred? How about this one? I was in Walmart the other day and I thought I'd have some fun. <laughs> Miss Kathy wasn't too far. I don't know if she heard me. But I said, I'm going to start a Nancy Pelosi fan club. Oh, shit. Woo! You thought I dropped a bomb in that place. <laughs> and this one woman, uh, she was running to one of the races. She said, no! <laughs> Woman's hated. Have you prayed for her soul this week? You see, I had not either. Up until I'm working on this stuff. You see what's happening to us? You see, listen, we need to leave that stuff here tonight. Brother Ronnie, we need to leave that stuff here. Get it off of you. It's the wrong doctrine. It's Judaism. Building nations. That's, and they may be about it. Catholicism is a kingdom type of a setup. Sure, she's Catholic. She believes in building the kingdom. Nation building. But we still need to pray for her. Poor woman. <laughs> if nothing else, help her find the Bible. <laughs> All right. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now, that got some of you. Now, listen to this old preacher. See that gray hair? That didn't come cheap. And I'm telling you, you're wrong for hating those people. You need to pray that God save them. That's what you need to do. And then you need to reach the ones here, individuals. I don't care whether you come to church or not. If you know Christ and you know salvation by grace, you need to be telling others about it. And I love you. But don't tell me. Read the Bible. It'll tell you. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Folks, we're preaching about the gift down here. That's what we're preaching. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. We're supposed to be telling them they can be reconciled to God. One individual at a time. Any of you folks ever heard of Armageddon? Yep. That is national warfare. National warfare. Listen to this old preacher. That don't have anything to the church body of Christ. Some of these Baptist fundamentalists think they're going to be marching in lockstep and be in the Battle of Armageddon. I know. They'll go to the book of Joel like it's for them. Let's go. That belongs to Jesus Christ. If you think for one minute that the church, which is the body of Christ, is going to do his job for him, you're wrong. It's going to take the intervention of Jesus Christ to change the world that you're seeing on, on Facebook and all of this stuff and TV Amen. and computers. It's going to take the power of Christ to eliminate death, to eliminate sin. Amen. That's who's coming. But there's no way the church of body of Christ is going to do it. There's no way, brothers and sisters. Nope. So what are we doing? Let it go. Enjoy your Christian life. Now, I promise people if they attend this church for more than six months, they'll start being more joyful as Christian. And you will. Because you'll find out what it is that we're supposed to be doing. And find out the other things that we're not supposed to be worried about. Now, and I'll say again, somebody starts setting up a dictatorship, I'll I'll vote for whichever way is good to vote, but I'm going to tell you something, folks. That's not my major concern. Because whoever goes in that office, people are still going to die and go to hell. And sin is going to be rampant. Paul warned us about these days. The church, prophetic things to the church from our apostle. The closer you get to him, the better off you'll understand this. So when you look at the television and you see all hell breaking loose, I'm going to check you up. 
Don't let it make you feel like a failure, Natalie. You're just a young, brand new Christian. I think. <laughs> but you're young. You, you, you come to church. Now here's, just think about it. Do you want me up here trying to tell you how to take over Smithville? <laughs> so to speak. There's lots of conservatives going to go to hell. Lots of conservatives going to go to hell. If we don't reach them, they're going to hell. Lots of Republicans are going to hell. You saw them in the Democrats were by now. They brainwashed you. You see, they put such a weight on you, and they're trying to make you feel guilty for not being able to change a country and a world that is hell bound. Honey, it's going to take the power of Jesus Christ to turn this thing around. And he will come. It's going to take us out first. That's what we've got to tell them. Look, get saved, get raptured, and then let him come back and take care of business. Because that's exactly what's going to happen. Get saved and leave with us. <sighs> that's not my outline. <laughs> I get excited, I can't help it. I don't want to see people suffer for no reason. I don't want you to feel guilty about being part of the church, the body of Christ. You shouldn't feel guilty. You should feel happy about that. And this knowledge, this spiritual knowledge of salvation by grace coming into your life, it's going to build your life, strengthen you, and give you joy individually. Then we meet corporately together and encourage you people in that. We sing joy to the world every Christmas. Do we believe it? <laughs> There's going to be something other than joy when he returns. Amen. Them folks are going to wish they'd have listened. I'll guarantee you, but it's going to take his power. Stop feeling guilty because there's so much mess around us. It is not the result of the church, which is the body of Christ, that's trying to reach folks one at a time for Christ. The nation builders has put their guilt on us. They don't rightly divide anything. They leave Paul out of all of it. And they'll go into Isaiah, Ezekiel. These folks, I know that system like the back of my hand. I know see how Schofield's entire 1901 system of prophecy backward and forward. You're not going to fool me with this stuff. I know it. And I'm telling you, that system is not our system. I don't know how many hundred times I have to try and help you be joyful in life, but I will not relent. And I'm going to tell you something about the prophetic boys. They have come three years beyond C.I. Schofield. If you want to know the prophecy, get you a Schofield Bible and go through it, and you'll know just as much as the ones on television. I don't care if they got a Jewish background. I don't care if they got a Arabian blood running in their veins. That doesn't impress me one bit. If they don't trust Christ, they're going to go to hell like a bullet. And if they're not trying to reach souls for Christ, they're not in God's will. And all we're doing in this country is wasting a lot of money on books we don't need. You got the book. If you don't have one, we'll give you one. You won't have to buy one around here. Brother Ronnie will buy you one, <laughs> not me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's true. No, we will. This church will. But I'm telling you the truth. You're not ever going to be happy until you see some of these things for what they are. In the social structure of Israel, I'm going to read to you a little bit. Now, just a minute. In the social <coughs> structure of Israel, hold on, I'm coughing to death. And the social structure of Israel, religion and government were bound together as a unit. You know that. Religion and politics were inseparable. Religion. Now, folks, these guys would not have made good Americans, especially founding fathers. Okay? For, and that's okay. It was God's plan for them to do this. For all practical purposes, the law of Moses was divided into three parts. One, the moral law. Two, the social law, the nation's social functions, social, and the ceremonial law. 
That's Israel. That's not the church body of Christ. When Christ comes back to set up the kingdom of heaven upon this earth, he will rule as king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. Not as head of the church, the body of Christ. That's his spoke role right now. And he will forever be our head. We won't change just because we go to heaven. We'll still be in the body of Christ. That's our fold. That's our bunch in the Bible. He will be the Messiah. They won't like it. If you'll read Zephaniah chapter 3, you'll see they won't like it. Have you read that? I didn't say that just to take up space. Zephaniah chapter 3, and you'll read about the United Nations Assembly of Nations. But that doesn't have anything to do with the church. His rule, religion and politics, will be divinely united. It's what they're trying to do today through the Republican Party and the religious people in it, the evangelicals, they call them. I'm not mad at them. I love them. A lot of them are my brothers and sisters, but that's not the marching orders. That's not what we're supposed to be about. Now, if they win everybody in Congress to Christ, then we'll have a, a whole lot better Congress. Amen. But sitting and hating them and calling them everything in the book, folks, you've got to stop that. It's ruining your Christian life. I'm telling you, you can't be filled with hate and love at the same time. And you, you should feel like a complete success, not a failure. My God, you've gotten born of the Spirit. You're, you're on your way to heaven. You're a member of the body of Jesus Christ. The church is growing every day around the world. There are people that are like you that hate sin and the wickedness and all that. But there's very few, some of them, some of them are still hating everybody. They're doing that to you. You'll be able to think a lot clearer if you'll shake that brainwashing. Religious brainwashing, if you will. Shake it. That's not what you're supposed to be about. Now, I won't, I won't, I won't do that. But y'all know how you've been praying for certain individuals around. <laughs> I'll do it that way. And how much you've loved them and care about them. That's what it's about. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Whenever that thing gets set up, it will be a theocracy. And between now and then, I sure don't want one. The founding fathers didn't want one. Mm -mm. It's just as bad as communism. By the way, communism does have a God. It's called secular humanism. That's their religion. All right? God will rule over this earth. You think I'm kidding? And he's going to use one nation, not the church, to do it. I, if you think you're going to load up on ponies from Revelation 19, come back down here. I'm sorry, you are not. And when you, if you got here, you wouldn't have a job anyway. What are we going to do? Land God fixing to fight the battle of Armageddon. That's soldiers. And you stop down here and say, hey, salvation's a free gift. You don't believe what I'm preaching to you, do you? That's what you do. That's what we've been taught by our apostle. That's not going to be the order of the day then. The order of the day then is going to be kill them. The Bible says that the blood will rise to the bridles of the horses for over 350 miles. Now that ain't, that ain't grace, friends. That's unrelenting judgment of God Almighty. You don't have to judge everybody. He got this thing. If you don't believe that, then you don't you don't take solace in the fact that it's tried to put on us. It's not, it's not even our job. But we can reach one person at a time, love them, and tell them about grace and love and Christ and all the beautifulness of his majesty in the heavens. We can do that. And you can enjoy doing that. Do you think those people to sell you a book won't brainwash you? You're wrong. And some of them are just as sincere. Some of them actually believe what you're saying. Look at Matthew 19, 28. They looked at it so long. I doubt if any of them, I doubt if any of them tonight 
except for a smart few, has actually looked at Schofield's notes. I could sell books on prophecy if I wanted to. Just copy C.I. Schofield. Matthew 19, 28. Here's the one that's going to be in charge for that day. Matthew 19, 28. Matthew 19, 28. We're going to have one more verse and we'll be done. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye would should follow me in the regeneration. And this is the 12 minus 1, because we've got to get rid of Judas and get Matthias in there, plus 1 again. In the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, on this earth, King of kings, Lord of lords, ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones. This is the little remnant of Israel. 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Does that sound like any church you've ever been to? If it does, you better run because that's dominionism and that's exactly what I've been preaching against this entire time tonight. It's wrong. It's wrong scripturally. It's wrong in the heart and I'm telling you, you've been duped by the dominions. They believe whatever denomination they are. Did you know that the dominion church has 12 apostles ready to go in in Washington, D.C.? I bet you didn't know. Keep up the good work. You're helping them out. <clears throat> and feeling bad about yourself all the time. I don't want no part of it. I can't imagine a bigger nightmare than 12, 12 Baptists sitting in power in God's government in Washington. My God. Have y'all ever seen a camel? That's a horse put together by a bunch of Baptists. <laughs> Man, if you talk about making a mess, that's a mess. Now, that's what's going to happen down here. Now what's going to happen? Or what, or what do we need to be looking at? Look at Galatians 2.20. Listen. They're in the nation building. Whenever that, whenever that dispensation changes back to Israel after the rapture of the church, they're going to go to the nations and make war. And they're going to whip them. Look at the book of Joel. They won't even die. Read the book of Joel. It says you, you can't even kill them. God's God. And he said, go get them. He's, he's judging. He's tired of it. Just as tired of it as you are. I hate some of the stuff on the news just as bad as you do. But I'm not going to traffic in it. I'm not going to traffic in death. I'm not going to traffic in sin. I'm not going to traffic in the evil of this world. I'm going to traffic in the grace of God. I'm going to traffic in the, in the word of God. I'm going to traffic in the love of God. And I'm going to try to get a few more in. As far as it's my own personal responsibility. Not because I'm a uh, hot dog preacher. Just because of what it is that we're supposed to be doing. And Lord willing. How about that? Yeah. Lord willing. We do what we can. Don't go around feeling all loaded up all the time. You are not in a fundamentalist church. <laughs> God bless you. You're just not. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. In a little while, as you begin, and then you get this stuff, you begin to understand it, and somebody comes by and they spew some of this other stuff at you, you say, well, now, wait a minute. Let me show you something more, a lot more beautiful than that. <laughs> you set them down there and you start giving Bible lessons. You know what that is? That's success. That's God working in our lives. Successfully. All right, Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. I'm going to look at that board right quick before we quit. Galatians 2.20. All right. I am crucified with Christ. That's your attitude. It's supposed to be. It's Paul's. It's mine. Consider yourself done in this world. As far as you're dead for this world and alive in Christ. That's the joyful part of it. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. Brother Danny, there's not a greater comfort in a world that's full of sin than to know that Jesus Christ is in us. Amen. And with us, Mr. Connor. He's in us. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, his faith. 
he'll carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you comfort, bless, and keep you. He'll carry you through. Does he not? Yes, he will. Amen. I live the face of Son of God who loved me, who loved me, and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. We're not under the law. You're no longer under the law. Christ is in me of the truth. All right, let me look. What I've tried to show, the social setup of Judaism, Christ, nation building. Just remember this, nations, Judaism, nations, Old Testament, nations, nations, nations. Grace, Christ, and Christianity, false. Your workmen, just whoever the Lord puts in there. Christ as the head of the body. He is, he is king of kings, of course he is. He's going to come back and rule and reign. He's going to do that. Revelation 19, I read that. The moral law, social law, ceremonial law, intrinsically, Judaism is locked into political and religious system. That is not the church of body of Christ. I am not a king. I am your servant. Christ, the head of the church, Ephesians 1, Galatians 2, 20, we just read, and individuals. There's a marked difference between Judaism and Christianity. Right. What the difficulty is, you've got both systems in one book. That's why you must, and my poor brethren that say we've just got one verse I'm going to give it to you again. <laughs> Study. Now we just hit several. Mm -hmm. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a work that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We just compare the two systems. And now you know who we're in. Let's stand. And thank you for your patience with me. That was a little rough, but I just couldn't stay on. I had a little bit of an outline. I couldn't stay on. But these things are next to me. I hate seeing our country in the mess it's in. It, you know, if it was the right thing to do, I'd be all about it. Make everybody Republicans and bad. That's not what I said. For us, he said, tell them about reconciliation to God, would you? He didn't tell us to start wars with everybody. They're going to start in two or three more wars, Brother Danny. You know why? Because a lot of them are functioning under that system right now. So what you believe affects you. You leave here tonight, you should not feel guilty. You've been saved by the grace of God. You should not feel like a failure. You're part of the church, the body of Christ. People are getting saved every single day. You are a member of the most glorious, wonderful body of Jesus Christ. If, the, if we had robes in this church, they would grow and rot. <laughs> You're on the roll in heaven. You're not a failure. You young people, I know you catch flack from people that are unbelievers. I, I, you probably catch flack from some that call themselves Christians. Just stay with it. You're doing the right thing. Just love them. Love them. I had a certain person call me this week, I won't say who, and this fellow told him, said, I don't believe uh, he had a suicide in his family. And he said, I don't believe in God anymore. And this person said, what do I tell you? I said, well, lots of times you can't tell anybody anything in a situation like that. I said, well, what you can do, you can love, you can show compassion and kindness. And I said, he'll do it. I said, because right now he wants to live on, even though he said that out of his mouth, in his heart, he's suffering through one of the most painful things that can be done and happen to a person in this world. Get one thing right if it's weak. That's right. I said, I doubt if he'll listen to any kind of lesson you try to give him a spiritual lesson. But well, I mean, man tore up, tore down, and tore sideways. It's love. 
Sometimes they'll be your outright enemy. They will be your enemy. Do you want Jesus to say love your enemies? Do you? you? Alright. Thank y'all for your patience. Thank y'all for your patience. Brother Danny, would you dismiss us please? Father, as we leave here tonight, help us to go home knowing that we've been here where we should have been, Father. That we're not here by accident. We're here for a purpose. Father, help us to learn what that purpose is, Father, what we need to be doing. Father, just thanks for each one of us here tonight, Father, for the answered prayers and just everything that you bless us with, Father. Just continue blessing this church and we give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All of God's children said, Hallelujah. God bless y'all. Have a good week and pray for the Democrats. <laughs>